but a motor in anger, an unruly river unleashing its pent-up fury. In 1943, the damage caused was estimated at 250 million rupees. No wonder then it's called the River of Sorrow. But a greater loss by far is the loss of millions of tons of topsoil in a single year, lost forever. Soil that took nature a thousand years to produce, lost in a day. The rains beat down upon open fields, removing fertile soil, carrying away a country's rich inheritance, until the passage of years leaves nothing but rutted rock and gaping gullies. It was not always so. In years gone by, a generous cloak of leafy green covered hill and plain, harboring an ancient race, the Adivasis, children of the forest. Their wants were few. They never ravaged nature. But others came, land-hungry invaders. They spared no thought for the morrow. Hacking the highland forests, bearing by burning the land beneath. In their greed and ignorance, they squandered nature's resources. Their cattle stripped the soil further, pulverizing the barren ground in their search for food. With the next rains washing away all before them. And what remained? A bleached and sterile land. The disastrous floods of 1943 aroused the government of India into action. And a year after independence, there came into being the Damodar Valley Corporation, India's biggest post-war multi-purpose scheme. The Damodar Valley Project, whose mighty dams will check the river's monsoon vehemence, conserving its waters, distributing them where needed, harnessing their power potential for providing electricity. But the Leviathan Lake so formed will submerge countless acres, roadways, and even age-old settlements. What then of the people and their lands from which they draw their livelihood? They need not despair, for thanks to foresight and planning, there will be new lands for old. And new homesteads, replacing the ancient ones that saw their birth. Here's migration in keeping with the visions of a better tomorrow for thousands of village folk. Such is the new land which to offer a living must be scientifically reclaimed and tilled. First, a detailed survey to probe the mysteries of the soil. Its depth, its slope and erosion. Earth samples examined in laboratories determine the quantity of nutrients inherent in the soil. These are recorded in maps prepared of every acreage. Each region is graded according to utility, whether it can best be used for paddy fields, pasture or forest. Monster earth-moving machines come into action, leveling all before them. Broadly speaking, there are two kinds of reclamation. For rice cultivation, waterlogged fields are necessary. Therefore, a series of level strips, known as bench terracing, is made, which holds the water. For steeper slopes or uplands, unfit for paddy, contour ditching and channel terracing are undertaken. Notice the ditches, highland waters directed to needy fields below or detoured out of harm's way. After the first rains, contour ploughing is done, 
plowing across the slope, which method retains the water, allowing the soil to absorb it. This, the wrong way with the slope, denudes the land of soil and water. The next stage in field improvement, harrowing, aerating the soil, followed by manuring. Finally, sowing of leguminous crops like dancha, sun hemp or urt, according to whether the land is for paddy or upland. The legumes trap the necessary nitrogen from the air and provide the organic matter in which the new soil is highly deficient. Notice the nodules. They contain millions of nitrogen fixing bacteria. Finally, the leafy greens are ploughed under, enriching the earth, making it ready for use. Experiment stations set up by the Demodo Valley Corporation investigate improved methods of cultivation so that fields may be utilized to their best advantage. The results are made available to every farmer. Experiments that spell success where maize is concerned. Good. Better. Best. Thanks to the use of different manures. Similar experiments are done with paddy. Manure makes all the difference. Even the lowly pumpkin under control conditions can swell in stature. A quick field method of determining soil deficiency has been devised. Cut twigs are thrust in a prepared solution. If the twig changes color, the soil is either too acid or alkaline and must be suitably altered by using the correct manure. Giant stargrass, specially cultivated by the Demola Valley Corporation, is a mammoth money saver. When planted on reservoir buns, it holds the slopes together, preventing their being washed away by rains. Fish breeding farms are also flourishing. The same species fed different diets. Reclaiming wastelands and using them rightly is by no means the end of the matter. Soil erosion must be checked, otherwise vast quantities of sandy soil will eventually silt up the main reservoirs. The answer, afforestation. Even as acorns into giant oaks grow, so these tiny plants will, as they rise to maturity, be nature's sentinels checking soil erosion. But until their full size, say 10 years hence, other methods must now be adopted to check the reckless course of monsoon rains. Construction of smaller reservoirs or ponds will serve the purpose. Besides, there will be a ready source of supply for irrigating thirsty fields. The water will ensure two bountiful crops annually instead of a sorry solitary one. Longer then will the Demoda be a river of sorrow.